There's been firemen trapped in a situation where a rather handleable fire suddenly turns into something else and surprises them and traps them. A flashover can change the whole scenery, cut off retreats and so forth in a fraction of a second. Flashover, rollover, backdraft, fire gas explosion. You have probably heard all of these terms before, but perhaps you don't know exactly what they all mean. This film will answer all of these questions for you in time. But first, let's make one thing clear. The terms are confusing, and for all practical purposes, they probably always will be. Here's the secret though. It doesn't really matter what you call the beast. If you're a firefighter and you're caught in something like this, at the wrong time, at the wrong place, and without the proper training and equipment, there's a possibility you may not survive. We've been fighting fires for so long, and yet we didn't really understand fire. And so these guys have gone back to the basics, and uh, there was a big gap there, and they filled that gap. And once you fill that gap in the basics, that allows you the opportunity to, to improve every aspect of your operations right up to the strategic level. In the small European country of Sweden, back in the early 70s, two young firefighters named Krista Gieselson and Master Sander discovered the basic physics of the combustibility of fire gases using lab tests and field tests in burning buildings. I first met Krista Gieselson as a student at the National Swedish Fire Academy and he started laying out these theories about flashovers, when they occur and how you can predict them. I have been a fireman then both in Malmö and in Los Angeles County and Jacksonville, Florida. I could grasp what he was saying and I could see that, yeah, he's right, this crazy guy, he's right, he's got something there. And I could uh, relate it to uh, things that had happened to me while fighting fires. We had the inte den kunskapen, Christers favoritutryck, kalla feta övertänningar, energirika pyrolyserade gaser. Vad är det som behövs för att få dem att tända? Det är, man, man pratar inte de termerna. I den här lådan har vi ordnat en fördröjd tändkälla och vi har ordnat en för fet brandgasblandning och nu ska jag strax öppna här och då förstår alla vad som kommer att hända att det kommer att bli lagom blandning och så kommer det att smälla till va? Är ni med? Sen att han gick i bräschen för allting själv och visade att så här, jag är inte rädd, jag, det här är enkelt. Flash är ju mest kontroversiella vi, vi har va? Därför att när brandgaserna var så feta som de kunde bli, då var det risk för explosion. Och då menade Christer, och han visade också, att det här är de här tre sätten. Man kan alltså se på slingorna som brinner i taket, man kan kyla ner dem och man kan ventilera ut dem. Och klarar man inte det, då går man ut bara. Och det gjorde han, visade själv. Om du tittar på en vacker bild av ett helt lågande brandrum, då finns det kardon, fy fan vad det brinner. Eller okej, okay, det här rummet är övertänt. Men Christer gav mig blicken att titta på det där. Ja, det där är ett rum med gaser som har nått den temperatur och har förmågan till den tillluft som krävs för att det här ska vara lågande. Gör någonting åt det. Stäng dörren, det vi kallar antiventilation. Eller ta bort det som kallas värme som gör att brandgasen brinner. What these two Swedish firefighters discovered was this. If smoke is allowed to accumulate in an enclosed space, and is not ventilated out of the building, it will become a combustible and, in worst case, explosive mixture. In those days, back in the early 1970s, it was largely unknown that smoke is fuel. Some firefighters may have observed that smoke could sometimes behave erratically, but only isolated groups of scientists knew that what we call smoke is actually a highly flammable mixture of gases. Yes, it's like uh, walking into a minefield and not knowing where the mines are. But if you know where the mines are, you can walk around them. Or you can dig them up. Flashover, as defined by Christa Gieselson, is when the smoke layer inside a closed compartment starts to ignite 
and thereby becomes a contributing factor to the overall fire development. The modern term flashover means the point in which everything in a room, including the smoke, catches on fire and starts contributing to the overall fire dynamics. The old and the new terms are not entirely comparable. However, from a fireman's perspective, we could say that the modern term flashover more or less equals what classically was defined as a lean flashover. A lean flashover occurs when smoke ignites with access to plenty of oxygen. This scenario is not particularly difficult for a firefighter to handle. This, today, would most closely be termed a fuel-controlled fire because it is the amount and type of fuel that controls its size. There you have the lean flashover in the ceiling and what you've got is a thousand degrees C in the ceiling and about 300 degrees C at forward time. Now off the ground, Paul. However, like you probably have already suspected, the lean flashover is an unusual occurrence. Most fires occur in enclosed spaces with limited access to oxygen. This means that eventually the fire will consume all the available oxygen in the room and that's where your problems as a firefighter will begin. After the oxygen has been consumed inside of the closed compartment, the fire will no longer show any signs of activity. But just because there are no open flames, that doesn't mean that the fire has been put out. The danger is that when you have to go inside a closed compartment for a rescue operation, you have to open it up and then you let in air. And air is just what the uh, mixture is waiting for to be able to ignite. And that is something that is not explainable by using the fire triangle. One of the most important and treacherous scenarios that Gieselson and Rosander focused on in their research and field tests is what they called the rich flashover. A rich flashover occurs when there isn't enough oxygen for all the combustible energy of the smoke to be used up. Instead, unburned fire gases accumulate, causing a smoldering effect. Rich flashovers usually occur in enclosed spaces, and what happens after a while is that the fire basically puts itself out due to using up all the available oxygen in the room. This is what we today would call a ventilation-controlled fire, because it is not the amount of fuel, but how much oxygen is able to reach the fire that controls its size. However, when you open the door to that space, or crack a window, the rush of air can suddenly make the fire reignite. Sometimes the reaction doesn't happen right away. Even after the window is cracked or the door has been opened, the fire scene may appear to be inert for a while. Ja, det hela handlar ju om alltså i en riskbedömningssituation. Om man kan läsa situationen så kan man också förstå hur lång tid man har på sig att reagera. Det vill säga om man gör en rökdykarinsats i en byggnad och man har brandgaser eh, och hur lång till exempel man tar sig in i den här byggnaden. Eh, med tanke på om någonting skulle hända, om brandgaserna skulle tända så har man ju inte speciellt lång tid på sig att ta sig ut heller. This is an extremely dangerous situation because there could still be a delayed reaction in the smoke layer as the smoldering fire slowly reawakens. Delayed rich flashovers can trap firefighters during a BA attack with a delayed reaction, allowing them to reach deep inside a building thinking that they're safe. A delayed flashover, which we today call backdraft, is one of the most deceptive and deadly of all situations in indoor firefighting.
när det blir varmt så blir det ju en volymökning och det resulterar i att man i vissa fall får mer eller mindre ett eldklot som kastas ut genom öppningen. Jag tycker det är viktigt att komma ihåg när det gäller Bergdorf också att det är trots allt så att är man rätt klädd, man har sin skyddsutrustning, eh, du sitter i en öppning, en Bergdorf passerar dig på några sekunder så är du rätt klädd, du har mask och allting som du ska ha, handskar eh, och, och vatten med dig så bör du kunna klara den situationen bra. Däremot kan det vara så att om du sitter i ett utrymme i sig utanför det här rummet som flamman kommer ut i, alltså där elklotet kommer ut, om du sitter i det utrymmet och flammorna sen har svårt att gå vidare då riskerar du ju att hamna i det här en längre tid och, och det är mindre lämpligt då. The smoke layer may appear ever so harmless but a trained BA group will not be fooled by appearances. They know that wherever there is accumulated smoke there is a potential for backdraft. The modern term backdraft simply means exactly what it implies. The oxygen-starved, slumbering fire receives new life through the infusion of fresh air. The fire then reawakens more or less violently, shooting out rolling flames through any available opening. In this example, there is a fully developed fire in an outhouse. However, one room is full of smoke but appears unaffected by open flames. As soon as the door is opened and the smoke gases come in contact with fresh oxygen, the fire starts to spread and a small backdraft occurs. Fire gas explosion can happen when a fire has been affecting one part of a building and smoke leaks out into an adjacent space. This space, seemingly unaffected by the fire, could be a garage, an attic or any adjacent room that isn't completely airtight and where smoke can get in. When the carbon-rich fire gas is mixed with the oxygen, which in that space is untouched by fire, the fire gases may reach what is called ideal mixture. A smoldering flame, hot ashes, or even the spark from a light switch can be enough to ignite the smoke layer. There is no warning, and the reactivity and force in the often invisible smoke layer can be compared to that of traditional flammable gases. If we said to our guys, like, go into that corridor and it's full of petrol vapor, would they actually open the door before they did something to the petrol vapour. My guess is that you do something about the petrol vapour because you smell it and instinctively you think it's flammable, it's dangerous. But cold, grey light, smoke looks safe. You can stand up breathing it and it isn't. If that ignites and expands three to four times, it's going to hit the ceiling first, then hit the floor, then go out the corridor. And it'll happen so fast there's nothing you can do about it. Now that we have roughly explained the various terms, flashover, backdraft, and fire gas explosion. Finally, we need to understand the one term that unites them all, fire gas ignition. If you ask me what a rollover is, I don't really know, but it is ignition of fire gases. And what is a fire gas explosion? That is ignition of fire gases with a very good and ideal mixture. So it can be rather violent and uh, with high pressure. I think it's, uh, it's pretty amazing that nowadays firefighters still die in indoor firefighting. And at least in some of the occasion, it's pretty obvious it's, it's due to a lack of the understanding of fire behavior. For example, in 2007, we lost 18 people, 18 firefighters in the United States because of fire behavior related events. Unfortunately, it's taking quite a bit of effort to get people to recognize that there are answers, not just one, but, but several answers to this particular problem, that these fatalities are entirely preventable.
Well, maybe in 10 or 15 years this will, will have percolated throughout the, the service in a little bit more uh, effective way. Right now there are some fire departments that, that have embraced this wholeheartedly, but uh, there, there's still a lot of work to be done.